What's going on guys? Today we're working on this SSD drive. This unit came to us after drive savers and uh, usually uh, there are several reasons why we get uh, jobs sent in for second opinion. Somebody recently posted uh, on one of my videos um, something about the number of devices that get sent in for second opinion. And the reason number one is first of all the price the first company provided just did not suit the budget and that's totally understandable. This specific case was estimated at $3,800. Not everybody can afford that, but the data still remains important. So people will go and look for somebody who can maybe get it done cheaper. The second reason why we get these uh, second opinion jobs is because we demonstrate on our channel uh, things that we're capable of doing. And uh, usually when a case that could not be solved by the first company, uh, there is going to be some sort of explanation that the customer will receive, uh, whether it's platter damage, whether it's a corruption of some sort that they cannot physically overcome. And then the customer takes that information and they don't want to let go of their data. They go online and they start searching. They're searching for solutions. They find my videos and that's how they reach out. That's why you see so many devices coming in for a second opinion. That's why so many devices nowadays are coming in opened up. But there's also a reason number three. And the reason number three is that when you have a really large volume of work, but limited resources to uh, cover everything, the best thing would be to cover cases that are easy because you're gonna, they're a quick turnaround, they're easy money. And if you get big block stores on your side, sending you these devices day and night, like Best Buy, Business Depot, Staples, all these major brands channeling everybody who is coming in to see them for the help to these providers of data recovery, they're going to have this massive influx of jobs coming in constantly. So it's so easy to just do simple jobs. Some cases can be solved with a click of a button, seriously, with right tools. And if you understand the concepts, some cases are as easy as that. But there are cases where you're going to get your hands dirty. This is extremely technical. Not a lot of people want to get into it for, first of all, lack of knowledge, lack of skills, willing to learn how PC3000 can manipulate uh, cases like that in the benefit of the partial recovery. But most importantly is that they are extremely time consuming and they do take up a lot of resources. Uh, technicians time at data recovery shops is extremely valuable. Something that can be solved within one day can bring literally thousands of dollars in order to make uh, the time value of these engineers be efficient enough to tackle these cases. Sometimes things just do not connect. That's all I can say. So um, before we get into this video, guys, thumbs up, comment below for the algorithm. You're really great at it and enjoy the show. This was a good one. Uh, as you could probably tell by the sticker, it was sent to drive savers. Um, the reason why it wasn't recovered there client was quoted 3800 bucks I wonder what was happening with this thing so let's have a look dive in and check this thing out we have Fison PS5012 controller with the E12 version this is a currently supported version of a controller by PC3000 but before we go there let's uh, plug this thing in and see what we get as a response. Quickly inspecting it here. From the top view, I can tell that the ROM mode pins had been in use, as you can see by these marks. This is what's used to bring the drive into a safe mode, also known as a ROM mode. And that's what we probably will have to do if this device hangs busy or acts up in some strange way. So right now I have it connected to port zero on my PC3000 portable and I will fire this thing up. I just burnt the shit out of my finger. <clears throat> yeah, we have a short 3800 for a short drive why is there a safe uh, mode marks 
on this device <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it's freaking hot it, like I could connect the thermal camera right now um, I just need to reinstall software for it so but this type of heat right here is not even going to require any uh, type of thermal camera because uh, I'm just gonna use good old-fashioned cold spray 134 by MG chemicals spray the PCB up and I'm just gonna power this thing on for uh, literally one second oh yeah you see this chip how it lights up everything else stays cold but that Python chip right there is hot as hell and that's what burnt me so what do you guys think is wrong with this device well this is a Fison 61 O2 this controller is used on a variety of different devices I have this unit it's a completely different device but uh, here's what I discovered peel the sticker back and look what we have I think we have what we need for swaps like this I would use um, this jig that can lock both devices at the same time independently and then just simply swap it over so here the chip is aiming up here the chip is aiming down perfect so what we're gonna do we're gonna remove this 6102 and replace it with that 61 O2 even though they're from two completely different SSDs right so all right so we got flux we got these chips I'm not gonna reball them to be honest like they just they will come off they will have the original uh, pads on them still that's gonna be more than enough not pads I hope actually I <laughs> I hope I don't pull them with pads. I hope I just uh, remove them with the uh, without pads. <laughs> pads should stay on the board. Mm. Before I go there, I would still love to test the power on it just to see what it does uh, as far as the heat and um, consumption so we were raging at about like what 1.6 amps that's crazy uh, consumption amount for an SSD I mean unless <clears throat> we're gonna consume nothing at all which is a also a high possibility we should see uh, significantly lower numbers I take, took the chip off of it so yeah now we are consuming 100 and you know what everything is nice and cool around this area everything is where it needs to be Let it cool off a little bit, just uh, give it a breather.
All right, let's watch the magic happen. Okay, so put this in here, and this is how you make thirty-eight hundred dollars, guys. Um, yeah, we're at thirty. We're at three hundred milliamps, and we got the physical state light. Come on. <laughs> Um, I am going to open this up and I'm gonna see the ID of this device here and I'm gonna be able to tell you which uh, SSD this is Umus SSD and execute ta -da. And it's working just as if it was never broken before. So yeah, I'm happy with the result. So to recap the video, the whole drive was cloned. Every single piece of the information was extracted from this unit. If you guys need the service, the links are in the description. If you forgot to leave a comment, please do and hit the thumbs up to make that video go up in the uh, algorithm and uh, maybe more people can see that. Thank you very much for your time and I will see you all in the next episode.